All right, here is the famous retractable ladder problem. Remember, retractable means the length of the ladder can vary. All right, so we can pull out the ladder, extension ladder, or compress, we can press it, so we retractable ladder. This ladder with variable length is leaning against a house. <clears throat> the base of the ladder, so here's my little picture here. Here's my house, and here's the ground, and here's the ladder, all right? It says the base of the ladder is once again being pulled away from the wall. So this is moving out. The ladder is, uh, let's say, the ladder is pulled away from the wall at eight feet per second. The ladder is collapsing. The ladder, that is to say, the ladder is getting shorter. So the ladder is also, as you pull, the ladder is also getting shorter. So this is this really is the Christmas vacation problem. Clark is on the ladder and everything's falling down around him. So the ladder is also getting shorter. Uh, let's see, the collapsing at eight feet per second, also eight feet per second. All right. Um, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? So this is also moving. So all three pieces are now moving. This is a variable length, this is a variable length, and now this is a variable length. We need all three of those represented by a variable. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the top is 12 feet above ground and the ladder is 13 feet long? So what are we asked to find? We're asked to find how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall. We need to introduce some variables here. And to maintain what I've done before, horizontal is x. I'm going to say vertical is y. And while I'm at it, I'm going to say this diagonal, this hypotenuse, is z. And the fact that I just said hypotenuse lets you know that x squared plus y squared equals z squared is going to be our starter equation for this. So what are we asked to find? Fine, fine, fine. Here's the question. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? We need to find the rate of change of y. So we need to find dy dt. And there are a couple of things we know. We know what the units need to work out to be. They need to work out to be feet per second. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in to keep the physics people happy. So that's correct. We also know y is getting shorter. And so this thing can better be a negative number when we're done. This better be negative something. All right? Just to remind me. I'm just going to remind myself that needs to be negative. What else are we given? The base of the ladder is being pulled away from the wall at 8 feet per second. X is the one getting larger. Y is getting smaller. Z is getting smaller. X is getting larger at 8 feet per second. So the rate of change, feet per second. This is not just X. This is dx dt because this is a rate per second, per second. And so dx dt is given to be 8. Uh, what else? The ladder is collapsing. The ladder itself is getting shorter. This ladder itself is getting shorter at also at 8 feet per second. So dz dt is also, however, what I'm writing here is not correct. This is not correct because z is getting shorter. z is getting shorter. This needs to be negative 8. Anything that's getting shorter needs to be negative. Anything that's getting smaller needs to be negative. Anything that's getting less needs to be negative. Anything that's getting longer, that's increasing, that's getting bigger, needs to be positive. If you do this problem with a positive 8 here, you will get an answer. That answer will be wrong because the interpretation must match the physical nature of the problem and that has to be reflected in the algebra here. This is dz dt. And this is a negative value. What else are we given? Uh, the, the top is 12 feet above ground, so we're given a value for y is 12 and the ladder is 13 feet long. We're given a value for z and we know not to plug those in too soon and we know our starter equation we know the starter equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared from Pythagoras. I should think the rest of this should be pretty straightforward. 
What's the next thing? Do we do the derivative first? No, no. We do the differential count. Do we want dx dt in the problem? Yes, we do. Do we want dy dt in the problem? Yes, we do. Do we want dz dt in the problem? Yes, we do. Differential count passes muster. If it did not, you would need to have something given in the problem which would allow you to eliminate one of the variables. In this case, differential count is good. We've passed muster. Now, if the differential count is good, then you find the derivative. Then you actually create the differentials. Differential here is 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt. As odd as it may sound, I actually have had more than one student. This is, and not just in one semester. I've had students over the years. They'll, they'll work these out and they'll say, at last, a word problem I understand. And part of that's because of the structure. There's just cookbook, do this, do this, do this, do this. That's part of that. Uh, in fact, that's probably most of it. But it is straightforward if you keep your wits about you and follow the procedures. You, know, you, know, you do need to know how to do the calculus, right? Derivative, derivative, and then the derivative here is 2z dz dt. You may, if you wish, multiply this equation through by one half and get rid of all those twos. If you want to leave the twos in there and don't take any chances, that's fine too. And so what I'll do, I'm going to go ahead and work the problem with the twos in there. If you want to, multiply everything by a half. That cancels, that cancels, that cancels. The twos are gone. I'll leave the twos in uh, just to leave the twos in there. Now, we've done the derivative. Now we need to go back and find, and I'll substitute all the values again. So we need a value for x. Where's my value for x? We do not have a value for x. We need a value for a variable that is not given. Where do we go to find it? You go back before the derivative. You need a value for x that is not given. Go back before the derivative to find it. This is very common. Very common when you have multiple variables. One of them is not going to be given. You go back before the derivative to find the piece you need. We need to find an x. Go back before the derivative. I'm going to get rid of my picture here. So we need x. And we do know that x squared plus y squared, where's my value for y? 12 is equal to z squared, where z is 13. So if you need a value for the variable, go back before the derivative. So I have x squared plus 144 is equal to 169. So x squared is equal to 25. x is either positive 25 or, I'm sorry, positive 5 or negative 5. And we know which one of these we choose. We want x to be a positive distance. And so we're going to choose, we choose x to equal positive 5. And so we just found our value for x. Go back and continue merrily along your little way. So that gives us, I'm going to leave my twos in. I said two times five. dx dt is given to be, everything else is nice and given. This is straightforward. This is two times the value for y is 12. dy dt is what we're looking for. Is equal to two times z is where my number 13. And dx dt, I'm sorry, dz dt is uh, negative 8. And so what do we have here? That's 40 times 2 is 80, plus 2 times 12 is 24. dy dt is equal to, oh goodness, a 13 times negative. Uh, I have to get a calculator for that one, I think. Uh, I don't know if that's 260, but don't make me swear to that. Um, 2 times 18 is, uh, 2 times 8 is, uh, well, let's just say here, 2 times 13 times 8, and that's negative 208. I said that wrong, so that's negative 208. Let me double check that just to be sure. I have 2 times 13 times 8. I have 208. All right. And then solve for dy dt. And so I got 24 dy dt is equal to subtract the 80 to the other side. This is now 288. And then dy dt divided both sides by 24. 
dy dt is negative, and it's 288 over 24, and don't make me swear to that, but I think that's 12, because that's 144 over 12 is 12, negative 12, and so sure enough, it better be negative, so we got negative, see, there's my negative reminder, negative 12. Uh, how fast is the top of the ladder sledding down the wall is going at negative 12 feet per second at that point in time.